Hey guys, Keith here with another Impact Wrestling Review. So, Bound for Glory just finished up. And, uh, well, it was something. Overall, it was a decent show. Um, I feel like Impact's issues were really blown up tonight. Um, the crowd was pretty bad. Uh, they sat on their hands most of the night. We had a lot of audio issues. Um... A lot of interference in matches that I wasn't particularly fond of, but uh, like I said, overall, it was a decent show, um, so I guess we'll uh, get into it. So the first match was the X Division Championship match, which we got a preview of last week with a uh, six-way, and it was Trevor Lee defending against Sonjay Dutt, Garza Jr., Petey Williams, Matt Seidel, and Desmond Xavier. Uh, overall, this was a, a good match. Uh, there was a couple of sloppy points and a few miscues. Um, I think one of them was where Seidel was going for a Hurricane Rana off the top and completely missed, but Xavier sold it. And then Xavier went for the back handspring kick, and Seidel was completely out of range but ended up moving close enough to make it so it looked like he hit him, or he did hit him, but, you know, um, but outside of that, it was an entertaining match, it was, uh, Thursday was, or last week on Impact, they had the six-way where it was all six participants in the ring, this one, it was just two on two, and then the other four were outside on the apron, and you could tag in, and if somebody went outside the ring, then somebody was able to come in. It was a little weird in that aspect. I mean, maybe this is something normal in other promotions. I'm not too familiar with this. But in the end, uh, Petey Williams hits Desmond Xavier with a Canadian Destroyer, uh, goes for the pin, but Trevor Lee picks Petey up and throws him out of the ring, and Trevor Lee steals the victory and retains his title. Um, it was a good way to open the show. Uh, you probably would want your most exciting, fast-paced match, you know, one that's usually going to draw the crowd in to open the show, and uh, they did a good job here with that. Uh, after this, I guess this was where the Rosemary versus Taya match was going to take place, but we got Tyson D Dukes versus... Uh, Ishimori, and uh, this was an interesting match because Laurel Van Ness came out halfway and was doing the same stuff she's been doing over the last couple of maybe months, maybe a month, um, showing up in the crowd, so the camera was focusing on them and then focusing on the match, and it, it, it didn't really do much here. Uh, it, it seemed to be a decent match, but again, this was just thrown together, so I'm sure these guys weren't able to really set up anything good. Uh, Ishimori ends up getting the victory after a 450 splash. So, like I said, it was kind of back and forth between Laurel in the stands and the match going on, so not much here. So, you kind of had some momentum going throughout the show with a couple matches, and then I, I, I personally feel like this killed a lot of the momentum. So, Alberto El Patron came out, and he he says he's back in Impact Wrestling, and then he says that he gave the company his all, blood, sweat, tears, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and the company screwed him over. They suspended him, took his title, because of reports that were made that weren't true. But yeah, he said that nobody bothered to contact him while he wasn't there, and then he calls out Jeremy Borash, he goes up to the announce table and kind of threatens Jeremy, he says he's gonna, you know, he came to Canada to make a statement, and then he looks at him, and then he says, well, maybe not, and then he says, Bound for is gonna be amazing, and then just walks to the back, and it was just like, what? It didn't make much sense, but... I don't know how I feel about El Patron being back. So up next, we had the Abyss versus Grado in the Monsters Ball match. Um, this was kind of what you would expect. There was a lot of, well, hardcore wrestling. They had the barbed wire boards out there, um, thumbtacks, chairs. I think there was a table. It, it was kind of standard, what we expected. Um, so I think Grado had the upper hand at this point, and Laurel Van Ness made her 
appearance, which makes sense because she was a part of the storyline. She comes into the ring, low blows Grado, and then hits him with, a, I guess, a vertebraker. Um, so after this, the lights go black. Rosemary comes out. She hits Laurel with the mist. Uh, Laurel goes outside the ring. Abyss goes to choke slam Rosemary. She kind of like calms him down and talks to him, you know, since they have all the history together. And uh, so they get on the same page, and Rosemary sets up to spit the mist in Grado's face. Uh, so Abyss holds Grado. Grado ducks out of the way. Rosemary spits the mist in Abyss's face. And I think after this, we had a spot with the barbed wire. Uh, wrapped board uh, it was on the ground and Grado knocked Abyss on it and then put another board on top of him hit an elbow drop uh, didn't get the three count this might have actually even ha happened earlier I don't remember um, but yeah Abyss eventually got the win with a black hole slam on the barbed wire board so I, I was a little surprised I kind of figured Grado was going to go over um, but they're in Canada now, so I don't know if it just doesn't make sense because of the fact that it was about a U.S. visa, what they were feuding over, but who knows? It's wrestling. So I believe up next we had a backstage segment with uh, Team Impact, and apparently, I don't know if these backstage segments were pre-recorded, but the audio was completely screwed up. So it was just like a loud buzzing noise you would get every time someone would speak into the microphone. It, it was just bad. It was just, it it was just sad to see, um, because you were hoping this was going to be a new start for Impact and everything else, but crap like this happens. This happened. There was three uh, interviews in the backstage with Mackenzie, and each of them there were audio issues. Like I said, just unfortunate things that happen. So, up next, we had the Team Impact versus Team AAA match. I thought this match was pretty good. Um, Team AAA was able to isolate, I think, Eddie Edwards in the beginning. And then Storm got tagged in, and kind of EC3 was just teetering on if he wanted to be involved in the match and just kind of, like, not giving a shit. And uh, But there was a lot of back and forth. They gave this time, a match a lot of time. Um, so eventually toward the end, you know, EC3 gets on the same page as everybody else. And I think he low blowed both Pagano and Phantasma. And he eventually tags in Storm. Storm comes in, hits the last call on Pagano. And that was the end of it. After the match, uh, EC3 went outside the ring, got him and Storm a beer. So I guess everything is okay in the land of impact right now. Uh, that brought us to the Tag Team Championship match with OVE defending against LAX in a 5150 street fight. So before the match, we see someone laid out in the back with the Mexican flag over him, and then we see that same tattooed arm with the thumbs down from a couple weeks ago. Um, this was a crazy match. We got a couple good table spots right in the beginning. Um, I don't remember who it was. I think it was Ortiz that put Jake Christ through a table off the stage, and then Santana jumped off the scaffolding through the table onto uh, Dave, and it looked like he landed like onto his face. It was it was a nasty spot, but it seemed like everybody was okay. Uh, ended up going back in the ring. Jake Chris went for a suplex, superplex, I believe it was on Santana. Uh, he went through... No, maybe it was Ortiz. It doesn't matter. Uh, he was going for a superplex. He set up chairs in the ring. He, I guess, overcompensated. So he was the one that actually ended up on all the chairs. It, it was a, a nasty spot. It was cool, though. Um, Sammy Callahan ended up coming out and making his debut, which, for some reason, the crowd just didn't really care. I mean, this guy, he's a pretty big name. Um, anywhere he goes, he usually gets big pop, and, you know, the, the him and OV, OI4K, whatever you want to call him, um, 
they've they've been doing a lot of big stuff on the independence and you you would think they would get some sort of reaction but uh callahan comes out he throws santana off the top rope onto a ladder and then he pile drives ortiz through a table he throws ortiz in the ring and then both dave and jake pin him Uh, he grabs a microphone after and says thumbs up thumbs down so we're gonna see sammy callahan and ove together which is good I'm sure this feud isn't over, which makes sense after this ending. Like I said, it, the crowd almost seemed like they were uh, against Ov and Sammy by the end of the match. And uh, that brought us to the women's title match with Sienna defending her knockouts championship against Allie and Gail Kim. I thought this was a decent enough match. Um... Good amount of action. Allie has improved tenfold since, you know, I, I've said that she was the weakest link, but she lo- seemed to be on par with the other ladies. I mean, maybe a few steps short, but for the most part, keeping up with them. Good action to the outside. Um, Gail ended up winning with a eat defeat from the top rope. Um, so I, I actually kind of expected her to win, which I said in my predictions video. And uh, so I don't know how they're going to do this, considering the fact that she's going to retire at the end of the year. And the set of tapings, I believe, goes through February. So I'm wondering if they're going to do some sort of tournament or something like that. I mean, I know we're expected to see some new knockout talent over this set of tapings. So I'm guessing something's going to happen here. So I'm next, we got a little surprise. The zombie princess Jimmy Jacobs showed up. That guy right there. Um, so he comes out to, again, a minimal reaction. And when he came out to Wrestle Circus, I believe a couple weekends ago, and uh, I think he interrupted with Sammy Callahan. Surprise, surprise. And the crowd went insane. And I saw people posting on Twitter as well that they went to events that Jimmy Jacobs showed up to, and the crowd was hot. Here, very, very little. It's a shame. So he goes over to the announce desk, and, you know, Borash and Matthews are looking at him like, well, what are you doing here? You don't work here. And Jimmy grabs the mic, uh, the uh, headset, and goes, yeah, that's that's what you think. And then he just walks away. And, of course, Matthews makes a comment and says, i, I got to take a selfie with him. He was very proud of that comment, which was pretty funny. But he had the shit-eating grin on his face after he said it. And, uh... Up next, we had the Tag Team Six Sides of Steel match with Moose and Stefan Bonner versus King Mo and Bobby Lashley. Um, I think this match was better than I had anticipated. Um, Mo got busted open pretty early. Uh, it, it was funny because it seemed like Lashley and Moose were showing Bonner and Mo, you know, their, their strength in wrestling and so on. And so they fought. They were doing most of the work in the beginning of the match. And then they went down, and so we got Bonner and Mo fighting off together. And then, randomly, um, Dan Lambert opens up the cage door, and him and all of America Top Team go in. I, I kind of thought it was locked, unless I missed the part. Um, maybe he cut it off or something, but I don't think so. So, Mo ends up... Uh, getting kicked out of the cage out of the ring by moose they fight to the outside um he kicked i think he threw mo into the guardrail and then something happened where moose was on the ground dan lambert grabbed mo dragged him back into the cage shut the cage and locked it moose went up top jumped off the cage at a crossbody on uh lambert not lambert i'm sorry uh lashley and one of the american top team guys uh, then Moose ends up going after Lambert, Lashley hits him with a spear, and he pins him for the win. Um, yeah, I, like I said, it, it was it was a decent match in the beginning, and then when we got the interference of America Top Team, it was just like, why? I, it just felt unnecessary. Um, hopefully this feud's over with. I don't see any reason for it to continue on, but it's wrestling, and you never know. Um, and that brought us to the main event, 
with Eli Drake defending his global championship against Johnny Impact. I thought this match was really good up until the ending. Uh, we had some really good spots. At one point, they were fighting outside the ring, and Eli went to throw Johnny into the barricades, and Johnny slid underneath the barricade, popped up, and hit Eli. Eli pulled a couple new tricks out of the bag, hit a moonsault, and he just like looked like he was really keeping pace with Impact. It was it really felt like a main event match until the end. So Johnny hit Starship Pain, was going for the pin. Referee gets pulled outside the ring, and it's our friend Alberto El Patron. So he, I guess, Impact went and went to jump over the ropes to attack Alberto and Alberto moved and he hit the referee. Alberto grabs a chair, hits Impact with the chair, goes in the ring, hits Eli with the belt. Impact goes back in the ring. Al Patron hits him with the chair. Top of the chair breaks off, goes flying. And he throws Eli Drake right onto Johnny Impact. And that was it. One, two, three. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about Al Patron being back. It, it just... I thought this was going to be a reboot, it, but it just kind of seems like it's the same old shit again. And uh, it, it just felt like a really cheap way to close the show. Um, I don't know why Impact has this thing where outside interference needs to happen in so many matches. I mean, it happened in the... Let's see... Abyss and Grado match, we did get outside interference, even though it made sense with storyline-wise. But OV and LAX, we got outside interference. Again, made sense. Um, Moose and Bonner, outside interference. Granted, it was a part of the storyline, but I I just feel like it's unnecessary. We shouldn't have four out of six matches. Seven matches, right? Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Four out of seven matches shouldn't have outside interference. I mean, hey, maybe people like it, but not for me. But overall, it was a decent show. It it just kind of felt like one of their impact specials, like where they do Destination X and Victory Road. It it, it seemed overhyped for what we got, unfortunately. Um, but we'll see. Hopefully there is... The best yet to come. Um, Like I said, I think if they focus on the X Division, the Knockouts Championship, and less uh, gimmick matches, I I think we'll be better off. Like, yeah, matches just should have been regular matches, and I would have been happy with it. And I am glad that Eli is still the champion because I think he's really stepped up his game, and I believe Johnny Impact actually mentioned that in an interview and said that Eli was one of the underrated wrestlers that he's worked with and he's enjoyed working with him so far so yeah um it was announced that eddie edwards will be defending his ghc championship against phantasma this upcoming thursday on impact it was actually announced before the show but they made a spot where uh phantasma hit eddie edwards with a package pile driver on the ring apron so that would that made sense going into the match um yeah, and then we get more Alberto El Patron. So, until Thursday, this has been my Bound for Glory 2017 review. If you like what you've seen here, please like, share, and subscribe. Bye!